Thank you for having me here. I hail from New York City, where I was born and raised. Um, when Louis G. spoke, I felt the little bond there, but I want to tell you a little something about myself. Um, I tell people I was born and raised in Harlem when it wasn't chic to live there, before President Clinton came there and made it a wonderful place to live. And I came to Philadelphia right after law school, and um, my goal was just to survive, just to survive. Because as I grew up in New York City, uh, my mother died when uh, I was three years old. And my sister and I didn't have anyone to take care of us. And my father just walked away. Now, I know a lot of people may have that story, but for me, it was traumatic. And so when my father walked away, my grandfather folded my sister and I into his life. He was a widow at a very early age in 50. He had a third grade education and he had 10 kids. And he took us in. And he said to me, I want you to do your best. And I went on, I managed to make it through college and I managed to make it through law school. And like I said, I came to Philadelphia thinking, I just want to survive. And I didn't do too bad, you know? I, I managed to, um, I was a public defender. So as I drove into Greaterford this morning, it brought back a lot of memories as I um, used to come up here and do a lot of interviews of the residents here. And so I, I became a public defender. And then, then uh, Attorney General Corbett hired me as a senior deputy attorney general. And, um, and then I got a great job. I was a federal prosecutor. And you might think, well, this is a wonderful life. What is this woman going to talk about? Life is, life is not an accident. Embrace your purpose. But I was still struggling. I was struggling a lot. And um, I joined this church. And the pastor said, I want you to read this book called The Purpose Driven Life. And when um, I was asked to do this, I thought, I don't want to tell my same story over again. I want to tell something that I can help people. And I always like to speak to leave you with something. And so I got this book, and we were supposed to all read it. And I got to the second paragraph. And if those of you who have read it, the second paragraph says your life is not an accident. And I could not go beyond the first page of that paragraph because I thought, Okay, God, my mother died when I was three. My father walked away. I've had a lot of money struggles. I've not made some great decisions in my life. And my life has just been hard. So I put the book away. And it took me about a year. And every couple of months, I take this book out of the drawer of my bedroom and I try to read it. And I could not get beyond it. I could not get beyond why my life was so hard. Who would how many people did not have a mother? I felt like I was all alone in that. And so I kept going back to it, and I kept going back to it, and it didn't happen overnight. But one day, and I shouldn't say one day, but over time, I realized that it's okay that I've had struggles. It's okay that I've had challenges. It's made me who I am, and it's probably contributed to a pretty successful life. And so what was I complaining about? Why was I struggling? Why was I embarrassed? Um, and I began to embrace my challenges and look for a purpose in life. What was my purpose? I found myself running to events. There wasn't a bris, a communion, a bat mitzvah, a bat mitzvah that I wouldn't go to. And I just really tried to slow down with some help and some friends and find out my purpose. And my purpose was to really mentor people to try to really do the best that I could in my job and let God really take me the rest of the way, to not just survive anymore, but to live my life with more purpose. And so I wasn't afraid to tell people anymore that my mother died when she was three and she had a lot of problems and she never took care of me. That was something I was not really able to vocalize through all my successes. And when I was a federal prosecutor and when I was a deputy attorney general, my cases were in the newspaper and people were like, wow. But I still held on to these things that I hadn't forgiven myself for, that I hadn't really come to terms with. So really what I'm here to tell you is that your life is not an accident. If you're a resident here, you know, this may be where you spend the rest of your life or this, you may go outside of here, but your life is not an accident. Forgive yourself. Um, and the things that I'd like to leave you with are a couple of things. Find someone in your life who will be honest with you, who will tell you the truth, who will not tell you you're cute, funny, and you dress well. Those are for your spouses. That's what spouses are for. Um, 
But find someone who's just going to be honest and say, you know what, I've had people say, Kenya, that's not a great idea. Do not do that. Um, and those people have served me well. Um, they care about me. And also, find your purpose, your life, whether it's here or whether it's someone else, somewhere else. That's what's going to motivate you. If you don't have a motivation, it's hard to get up in the morning. And I think that's one of the things that I found that I, I kept running and going and going to every event, and I just slowed it down. And God has given me a lot of blessings, and I don't forget that. I used to say I'm very lucky when I got another job. Someone would say, wow, and I'd say, I'm very lucky. And at some point, I started saying, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed, and I'm not afraid to say that I'm blessed. And as you go through whatever your journey is, embrace your challenges. Um, you know, I stand before you having been the first African-American inspector general, and I'm the first African-American woman at the University of Cincinnati. And I still have struggles. I still have struggles when people say, wow. You know, I'm not afraid to say it hasn't been an easy path. You know, my grandfather died when I, um, right after I graduated from law school. And that was another thing I kind of held on to. Woe is me, something happened to me again. But you know what? That was a lesson for me too, that I didn't need to hold on to him for as long as I did. And I needed to let him go because he was an older gentleman by the time he started taking care of us. And I just said to myself, I'm gonna live my life with purpose. And whatever that purpose is, I'm just going to embrace it. And I started feeling free and not having as much pent up tension in my life. And you know, I got through the book. And every so often I open the book just at any page and it seems to always pop up to the second chapter which says your life is not an accident. And I go through the highlighted parts and it gives me just a sense of peace. Um, and whether you're a spiritual person or not, Rick Warren, he really got it here. Your purpose-driven life, whatever your challenges are, whatever your struggles are, embrace them. Get some good people around you who will tell you what you really need to hear. Find a purpose. It'll help you feel better about yourself. And the last thing I want to tell you is mentor someone. You get more out of it than you give, and um, people really, really enjoy it. So thank you for having me here.